、いい正解。Rebirth of the Malicious Empress of Military Lineage, Chapter 92, Jade Rabbit Festival. They have arrived. With Zi Jing Xing's words, Jiao Yang's joking expression was put away as he looked at him. You are saying that they have arrived at Ting Capital? You guys should pay more attention these days. Zi Jing Xing frowned. The thing in Prince Yu residence might have spread out and perhaps had exposed your identity. Do not go out for these few days. How can you do it alone? Not waiting for j a o Yang to speak, Ji Yu Xu anxiously said, You had already aroused their attention, and now that they had entered Ding Capital, they would definitely look for you, and you cannot activate other people in the capital. No need to worry. Zi Jing Xing lazily stretched his waist and a trace of viciousness appeared in his smile. I have waited for them to come for a long time. Third Zi older brother, are you going to teach someone a lesson again? Ji Yu Shu looked at him with eyes sparkling. Can you take me this time? All right, Zi Jing Xing casually said. You can be a target then. Jiao Yang. The matter about Prince Yu and the Shen family in the Ding capital was soon drowned in the joy of the approaching New Year. It was after all the New Year and everywhere was surrounded by a lively atmosphere. That tragic massacre on that stormy winter, as well as the gloomy despairing suicide in the prison was soon left behind of everyone's mind. Nothing was more important than welcoming the new year and time would not stop. New snow would cover the old snow, new conversations would replace the old ones and new hopes would always be preferred over the past. The emperor in the palace also did not show any reactions and even spent a lot of money to hold a palace banquet. And invited all the ladyships and concubines to welcome the new year. Obviously, the death of his blood younger brother had not caused Emperor Wen Hua to feel sad. This made the common people feel that the rumors of the ruthlessness of the imperial family were indeed true. But the really smart people would know that Emperor Wen Hua had nipped the problem in the bud and it was handled so cleanly. Thus, was secretly happy. So, even if the government office was unable to find out the perpetrator of the extermination of the entire household and the case became an unsolved case, Emperor Wen Hua did not pursue it. Shen King was buried together with Prince Yu in the royal tomb. But because Shen King committed suicide and her identity was overly awkward, The imperial family did not give out any compensation. This made old Shen Furen angry for a while. In the western courtyard, Bei Lu and Shuang Zhang were bringing the books out from Shen Miao's room to bask in the sun. Shen Xin and Bu Wu Zhu Yan went early in the morning to practice drills with the new recruits, as there was a need for training due to the annual recruitment of new soldiers at year's end. Shen Kaiyu also followed to join in the fun, thus, Shen Miao was left alone in the western courtyard. A few days ago, eldest young master once again sent a number of books over. How about bringing those over to bask in the sun too? Gu Yu asked Shen Miao. I still have uses for those books, so there is no need to sun them. Shen Miao answered. Ever since Shen Kaiyu noticed the many military books in Shen Miao's room, He immediately told Shen Xin and Luo Zhu Yan happily about it. Shen Xin and Luo Zhu Yan also thought that she was temporarily interested, and be it as it may, they still ordered others to search for several military books. If one did not know, they would think that the Shen family intended to raise a little female general. Naturally, Shen Miao did not have any intention of being a female general, but it was due to the many dangers that the Shen family army would face in the future. And she could only rely on the possible problems that the Shen family army faced in the previous lifetime. Thus, there was always no harm to read more. Bei Lu said as she flipped the pages of the books, Tomorrow is the Jade Rabbit Festival, and one heard that there would be a scene of tens of thousands of people lighting lanterns by the Wanli Lake. Will young lady be going tomorrow? The Jade Rabbit Festival is a festival of Ming Chi. In every night of the eve of the new year, People would come out of their homes into the great streets and small alleys to look at lanterns and solve riddles written on lanterns, making it really lively. There would be an exceptionally big jade rabbit in the middle of the lanterns, blessing and protecting the entire Ming Chi to have a favorable weather in the oncoming year so that commoners would have a good harvest. This year's Jade Rabbit Festival was different from previous years as the jade rabbit was on the lake. 
Thus at that time the common folks can also place their own flower lanterns on the water and pray for their wishes. With the flower lanterns on the water, the image of it would certainly be very lively. Bei Lu and Shuang Zhang were also young females at the prime of youth thus it was common to love such fresh ideas. What nonsense are you saying? Gu Yu scolded. At that time the entire street will definitely be crowded and what if something happens to young lady? But in previous years, did not one always went? Bei Lu said, unwilling to submit. Previous years are previous years. This year is this year. Gu Yu said fiercely. Bei Lu was not wrong, at this time in previous years, Shenzhen and wife would have already returned back to the Ding capital and the Jade Rabbit Festival was when the entire Shen residents would all go out to watch the bustling occasion, but this year such a big matter happened to the Shen residents and Prince Yu residents and the mastermind had yet to be found. If there was one who took the opportunity to retaliate then Shen Miao's situation would indeed be much more dangerous. No matter how big the excitement was, it was not as important as the safety of Shen Miao. It is of no bother. Chen Miao gently smiled, I originally also wanted to go and take a look at the excitement. With father, mother and eldest brother at the side, there would not be any danger. But, Gu Yu still wanted to persuade. It will be like this then. Chen Miao interrupted her words and walked back to the room. Gu Yu could only restrain the worries in her heart. She did not know from when onwards Chen Miao had developed a temperament of standing by one's words and did not have any signs of wanting help from the people of the second and third household like previously. It was indeed good to have a mind of one's own but when she got stubborn, it also made others feel helpless. Shen Miao returned back to the room and walked toward her desk to sit down and her eyes fell onto the plum blossoms branches outside. The branches were dotted with little red spots but reminded her of the letter that she received before. The Chen family brothers had returned to Zhongnan and after the Prince Yu residence was eliminated, they did not have any other contact. Shen Miao was extremely cautious and all the communication exchanges with the Chen family was through the letters that Mo King and Feng Xian Pawn Shop sent over. Mo King's life contract was not in the Shen family thus others would not suspect her at all. This time Mo King brought another news back to her. Previously she had entrusted Ji Yu Shu to make some inquiries about a young lady Liu Ying and finally there was some information. Her whereabouts were exactly in the biggest money squandering established in Ding capital, Bao Xiang Lu. Young lady Liu Ying was Bao Xiang Lu's number one beauty and one heard that on the day of the Jade Rabbit Festival, she would be playing the Jade Rabbit Fairy to dance by the lake. She really wanted to take a look so she took advantage of this opportunity. As for Gu Yu's worries about the matter of people taking revenge, this mention did not seem to be of any worth to Shen Miao. The Chen family brothers were cooperating with her so where was the logic of revenge? As for the Shen residents, currently Shen Old Furen was so angry that other than her two sons and the second household's grandsons, she was not willing to see anyone else. The second household of the Shen family was considered as collapsed and Shen Yuan was busy with fawning over the people of the court and would not take any action on her at the moment. The third household had always concealed their strengths and bided their time, so at such a critical juncture, they would not take any actions. Now thinking about it, there was not a year that was actually more comfortable than this. As she was thinking about it, Shen Miao's lips slightly hooked up which made Gu Yu, who was looking at her, to could not help but be startled. But before she could recover to her senses, she heard Shuang Jiang's voice. Shuang Zhang walked in from outside and said, Young lady, the eastern courtyards Wan Yi Niang wants to come over and see you. Madam Wan, Gu Yu frowned and softly said, Why her again? Why does this Wan Yi Niang keep running towards our courtyard? Shuang Zhang and Bei Lu also whispered, this is already too much of a rush to fawn. Several of the maids were not welcoming toward Madame Wan. In fact ever since after Ren Wan Yun's and Shen King's matter, their disgust with the second household increased. Regardless of what Wan Yi Niang had, she was after all a second household's person and to keep running over here all day, made one feel really uncomfortable. A few days ago when Wan Yi Niang came to see Shen Miao, it was declined by Shen Miao by a various means. Today she however said, 
let her in. Jing's was stunned for a moment before she complied and head out. It was Gu Yu and the few others who had a look of worry, afraid that Wan Yi Niang had bad intentions. After a moment, Wan Yi Niang followed Jing's in and Shen Miao raised her head to look at her. Wan Yi Niang was wearing a dark blue lined jacket and a green colored skirt with a plain silver bracelet looking like a very simple person, but upon a careful look, the line jacket has white little flowers embroidered on it and the skirt was tailored to a waving form, and that pair of fair hands had a bright nail polish on, which was very captivating to one's eyes. As for that seductive waist, coupled with the slim and lively body, it made one's imagination roam. Looking upwards, she had an oval face, big eyes, fair complexion and red lips that when she smiled, there appeared some coquettish air on her. This was a female who knew how to lie low, from how she was able to not appear for many years because of Shen Dongling, one was able to see that, but she was also one who was unable to remain calm. Upon Shen King's death and Ren Wan Yun's craziness, she paraded herself ostentatiously around. In Shen Miao's previous life, she had seen a lot of such people with that little smarts and little good looks, one thought that as long as they were willing, they would be able to firmly control men's hearts, not knowing that there were numerous fresh females in the world and that men's hearts were the most elusive. If one was able to remain calm, then perhaps one would be able to have a special position in the man's heart but once one was unable to remain calm, the little smarts they had would become too smart for their own good. Wan Yi Niang was obviously the kind of person that was too smart for their own good. Wan Yi Niang dashed to give a greeting and sat on the small stools in front of Shen Miao by herself. She sat down on her side with her legs slightly tilted. Her body line was very smooth and flexible. She indeed has the foundation of one who was a lead entertainer. Shen Miao calmly looked at her and did not say any superfluous words and directly went to the point. For what reason did Wan Yi Niang look for me? Wan Yi Niang did not expect that Shen Miao would be so direct with her words and it made her choke a little. She had heard that right now in the Shen residence, Shen Xin and wife had the greatest power and that the previously idiotic fifth young lady was also a powerful one. Thinking of her purpose of currying favor, she had not thought that Shen Miao would not bother about social courtesies, which made Wan Yi Niang somewhat unable to predict if Shen Miao was one who did not understand the world, or was being deliberately mystifying. In fact Wan Yi Niang had thought as much, as Shen Miao could not be bothered about her because one Wan Yi Niang was not worth it to be valued by her. Wan Yi Niang smiled obsequiously, the new year is nearing. This concubine has come over to take a look at fifth young lady and also to wish fifth young lady a good year. She said, seemingly because of eldest young lady's matter, one has caused fifth young lady to be unhappy so this concubine represent master and fear and to apologize to fifth young lady. Shin Mia looked at her with a smile but not a smile, Wan Yi Niang, your apology on behalf. One do not know if Second Shu and Second Shen are aware of it. Wan Yi Niang was slightly stung but continued to smile. This lowly concubine's words carry little weight and it was also said by master to this concubine on some impulse. This concubine then acted on one's initiative to come over and apologize to fifth young lady. Shen Miao looked at her without blinking an eye at all. To be stared by Shen Miao like that. Wan Yi Niang's expression started to be restless but she quickly pressed it down and said smilingly, in fact, third young lady also wanted to come and see fifth young lady, after all you are sisters but third young lady recently caught some chills, and was afraid to encounter any wind and could only come over to talk to fifth young lady after recovering. Shen Dong Ling, Shen Miao's eyebrows raised, other than the 3D daughters in the Shen residence. There was actually a Shu daughter, which was Shen Dongling of the second household, who was born by Wan Yi Niang. In the Shen residence, the third household and Chen Rikayu only had Shen Yu, 
one daughter on Shen Zin and wife only had Shen Miao and Shen Kaiyu but the second household Shen Gui had a house full of concubines and also gave birth to Shu daughters but all of them died at a young age thus that was why the ranking of the Di daughters in the Shen family was somewhat odd. Shen Dongling was ranked the third so she was called third young lady. Ren Wan Yun had the character of most jealous. So after Wan Yinian gave birth to Shen Dongling she would stay in the courtyard and not come out all day. That Shen Dongling was also a weak and sickly one, in Shen Miao's previous life, she did not have any impression of Shen Dongling at all. She was almost a transparent person, even if a Shu daughter was not favored by whichever noble family she perhaps would be bullied and scolded but would not be like this practically forgotten by others. If such a person like this was really weak till one could overlook and disregard, it meant that one could tolerate what ordinary people would not be able to do so. In the previous lifetime, Shen Dongling at the end seemed to become a bargaining chip that Ren Wan Yun used for Shen Gui's career and was given to others. In this lifetime Ren Wan Yun had lost her power and Wan Yi Niang once again flew up to the highest branches, Thus it was unknown if Shen Dongling's fate would change because of it. Third older sister's health is not good so it is better not to come out. Shen Miao said lightly, if one were to catch a cold because of this, I cannot take responsibility of it. Wan Yi Niang was somewhat displeased when she heard this but still had a smile on her face when she said, this is third young lady's single-hearted wish to get closer to fifth young lady. It is a long story of this concubine's weak health that third young lady is sickly after birth, and could only watch other kids play from the courtyard for so many years. It is all this concubine's fault. As she said, she tilted her head and used the handkerchief in her hands to cover her mouth as if she was extremely distressed. Shen Miao could not stand Wan Yi Niang's fake act and lightly said, No one can be the master of one's body. Furthermore third older sister had been staying in the courtyard which might not necessarily be bad. Eldest sister had enjoyed the enjoyment but who knew that beautiful woman would suffer unhappy fates. Her lips slightly hooked up. One's fortune after all cannot be visible on the surface. When the words were spoken, Wan Yi Niang looked at Shen Miao with some surprised and bewilderedness but after a moment she forcefully smiled, fifth young lady said correctly. She suddenly stood up and looked towards Shen Miao, fifth young lady. This concubine remembers that there are matters to tend and will leave first. If there is a day where fifth young lady is free, third young lady would come over to have a chat with fifth young lady. Her health is not good so may fifth young lady please pardon. Finishing, she greeted Shen Miao before leaving elegantly. However as compared to the silhouette before, it seemed to be much more in a rush and panic. Jing's was all the while been at the side serving tea and when she saw Wan Yi Niang's silhouette leaving in a hurry, she said puzzled. What does Wan Yi Niang mean? Come over to express goodwill. And that third young lady had not come out of the courtyard for many years and had not even seen young lady for a few times. How would there be any emotions like what was said? Exactly. Gu Yu was clearing the teacup that Wan Yi Niang used to drink as she said, now thinking about it. This servant also cannot remember how third young lady looks like. In any case, she is also a young lady of the residence but to hide for so many years, it was most probably to hide from second Furen. Really pitiful. What pitiful? Shen Miao picked the tea from the table and took a light sip, one afraid that in her eyes, you all are even more pitiful. Her? Jing's was puzzled. Young lady is speaking about third young lady? Shen Miao smiled, it is I who had made an error of judgment. In our residence there is another intelligent person. Wan Yi Niang's purpose today was clearly to sound out. However with Wan Yi Niang kind of person who expose her smarts, she could only think of such a method like this to sound someone out. On the surface she seemed to be itching to announce her regaining Shen Gui's favor but if one carefully think, it was not the case. One would see the head of the legendary dragon but not its tail. That Shen Dongling that had not shown her face at all was much more intelligent than Shen King. However, no matter where she stood, Shen Miao would not see her as a friend, not to mention sisters. One must be on the guard. 
She put the teacup in her hands down and reminded the maids by the side. But at the other end of the words, Wan Yi Niang was returning back to her courtyard in a rush and closed the doors. Three steps became two steps as she went forward and faced the silhouette behind the screen, Ling Er. The silhouette behind the screen paused and looked towards Wan Yi Niang. Wan Yi Niang gave a sigh of relief and sat down on the wooden chair and repeated word for word the conversation with Shen Miao. She originally was a lead opera singer and had a good memory so she was able to repeat the two persons conversation as if it was actually happening in front. After finishing speaking Wan Yi Niang then said, Ling Er. What is fifth young lady's meaning behind those words? My heart trembled as I listened to it, you say. Does the matter with eldest young lady involved fifth young lady? Yi Niang have to guard one's tongue? The person behind the screen said, eldest sister's matter had passed and whatever was said outside is as such. One must not mention about the matter again otherwise, it would only harm oneself. I just feel that my heart is somewhat unsettled. Wan Yi Niang said. A light sigh came from behind the screen and the person who was sitting down placed the embroidery down from her hands and stood up to walk over to Wan Yi Niang's side. That was also a delicate and pretty young female that as compared to Shen King's magnanimous, Shen Yu's gracefulness and Shen Miao's dignified presence, this young female was soft and weak and her facial features followed those of Wan Yi Niang's. Her face was oval with large eyes. If her eyes were much more spirited then she most likely would be cursed by others to be a little vixen, but she looked so pale that even her lips looked like there was no blood. Thus the seductive charm was reduced and seemed to be somewhat harmless. She was wearing a rather old beige yellow coat dress. That coat dress might had belonged to Wan Yi Niang and as this young female's figure was not as fully developed as Wan Yi Niang. Thus when she wore it there were much more empty spaces that it discounted the beauty she had, making her look somewhat ordinary. That young female was indeed the Shu daughter of the Shen family's second household, Shen Dongling. Now everything is much better than before. Shen Dongling comforted, at least Yi Niang and I can go out confidently and do not have to be threatened by Furin. This Shen residence is indeed difficult to live in. Wan Yi Niang looked at her daughter and her heart had soured. In the beginning I had a voracious desire for wealth and thought that by entering the Shen residence, one would be able to sleep in comfort without worries in the second half of one's life. Who knew that it would be this difficult in the noble families and even implicated you? For so many years, in order to continue living under Furin's eyes, one had to live like this. Moreover the people in the residence are powerful. Even that originally wordless and quiet fifth young lady is currently that scary. Yi Niang, Shen Dongling shook her head. No matter if fifth younger sister is involved in eldest sister's matter, after all the mastermind had helped us. Even if Furin want to turn over her fortune, it would be difficult now. Even though second brother is powerful and Furin have the rank and position, but she have no more good prospects and would not be able to beat us. This is also true. Wan Yi Niang looked at Shen Dongling delightedly, finally broke clear of all the troubles and hardships. But Ling Er today you let me go ahead to feel fifth young lady out but fifth young lady treated me coldly, one fear that she was unwilling to accept our goodwill. Now what can be done? Not willing to accept then not willing to accept. Shen Dongling smiled, fifth younger sister seemed to be an intelligent person. That being the case, from now onwards it is better not to provoke her. If it is possible, let her deal with second older brother. Second young master? Wan Yi Niang was surprised for a moment. Second young master already entered officialdom and fifth young lady is just a little young female, how could she deal with second young master? Yi Niang should relax one's heart. Shen Dongling said, fifth younger sister is not a simple character. She is the sharpest knife in the Shen residence. The small moves in the eastern and western courtyards of the Shen residence were perhaps not known outside. Other than the residence people, most likely in other people's eyes in the Ding capital, the general's residence was harmonious and everyone was benevolent and filial. Before this year it had always been so but unfortunately the world kept changing and at times the seeds were buried too deep. 
and there would suddenly be a time where Sprout would grow. In the training courtyard outside the Shen residence, Mo King was exchanging blows with Shen Kaiyu's close soldiers. Akai was currently Shen Kaiyu's subordinate with the best martial arts skill but Mo King was able to fight evenly with him. In the beginning when Shen Miao introduced Mo King to Shen Kaiyu, Shen Kaiyu also wanted to test out Mo King's skill and after testing, Mo King was indeed quite good. Naturally Shen Kaiyu was very happy. There was no weak soldiers under a strong general so the more strong soldiers he had, the more resounding the reputation the Shen family army had. Ever since recruiting Mo King, Shen Kaiyu had been expressively boasting Shen Miao's foresight and occasionally pestered Shen Miao to go the hunts of the common people to discover such talents. But Shen Miao blocked it off with a roll of eyes. In the previous life there was only one commanding guard, with Shen Kaiyu's logic. Was there commanding guards in all the big streets and small alleys? After Akai and Mo King finished a round of hand-to-hand -hand combat, they were so tired and sweat was dripping down. Akai swallowed a big mouthful of water and said, It is indeed refreshing to exchange blows with Brother Mo. Brother Mo's entire body of sword skills is indeed superb that make one eyes heat up. Mo King cupped his hands. Brother Akai has overpraised. My sword skills are not considered superb. There are people beyond people and heavens beyond heavens. There are many superior people in this world. Could it be that there are people who are of even higher skills than Brother Mo? Akai smiled. Then I must widen one's knowledge. Mo King did not speak as his mind was at the night in Wo Long Temple. He carried Shen King and changed the rooms with Shen Miao. It was that night that had changed the fate of two people. That night there was a black clad person that swept into the room from the window and easily took his sword within five moves. Under that person's hands, he was as weak as a child and he heard Shen Miao calling him Little Z Marquis. That young male's sword skills had truly reached perfection. Akai sighed before speaking, not sure if one could kill enemies with Brother Mo in the battlefield. Such a happy matter, I actually could not wait for it. Unfortunately the general will be staying in the capital for six more months for the young lady. If one were to join hands against the enemies, one must wait for half a year more. He looked at Mo King, speaking of which our young lady has a discerning eye for heroes. To be able to discover a person like Brother Mo, it is indeed rare. Young lady is truly an incredible person. Mo King said. After following Shen Miao for a long time, he disdained some of Shen Miao's actions. As a female, Shen Miao was cold and ruthless without any compassion but one could not hate her as the people she dealt with were those that had set her up to death. Mo King remembered the day when Shen Miao parted the carriage's curtain and asked him with a smile, Are you willing to sell your entire body filled with martial arts skills to our Shen family of military lineage? A true gentleman would sacrifice his life for a friend who understood him and from a certain point of view Shen Miao was Mo King's benefactor. Akai hammered a punch at him. I know you are picked by young lady and naturally find her good. Do guard her well during the Jade Rabbit Festival tomorrow. N? Mo King suddenly raised his head and looked upwards. Why? Akai also looked over at his gaze and was unable to make head or tail out of it. There is nothing. Probably I felt incorrectly. Mo King shook his head and ignored the strange feeling in his heart. At the other end of the wall there were two people squatting at the moment wearing bamboo hat and had their face tightly covered that one was unable to see their appearance in a glance. One person said, This Shen residents indeed have talented people. For a guard to have such an ability that almost found both of us. Indeed. The other person pressed his voice down to discuss, There are so many guards outside and with Shen Zin soldiers watching over, it would be overtly risky to take action from inside and probably would not be easy to succeed. Instead one would inadvertently alert the enemy and if in the future Shen Miao will be protected so well that a single drop would not leak, then it would be even more difficult to take action. Above had sent down instructions and it was difficult to have such little news. That person said to the companion, if one was able to achieve the outcome from questioning her then this trip would not be wasted and both you and me only need to wait to be promoted. How can one give up halfway? Naturally one cannot give up. The person wearing the bamboo hat smiled, 
Did not the two guards just said that during tomorrow Jade Rabbit Festival Shen Miao would be going and during the surge of crowd, it would be easy to do something. At that time a wave of people can be used to draw the Shen family people away and another wave of people can take her away. Do it cleanly and neatly. That person's words were filled with thick vicious intentions, in order to nip the problem in the bud. Throw the body into the lake after asking and do not get any other ideas. Naturally, 